Starting off at our number 10 spot, we have you're such a baby. In the cross examination of Amber Heard, the famous tape where Amber admits to hitting Johnny and calling him a baby is played. There is a good minute or more that is played that gives you context as to what was happening at the time. Prior to hearing the recording, Amber testifies to the court that she only hit Johnny out of defense and that she never hit him otherwise. But in this recording, it shows that that actually isn't true. Johnny's lawyers proceed to say to Amber, you said you hit Mr. Depp. To which Amber replied, Yeah, I had to hit his body to get him out from the door. To which Johnny's lawyer replied, Miss Hurt, my question was, you said on that recording that you hit Mr. Depp, right? To which Amber replied, Yes, I did. To which Johnny's lawyer set the trap and replied, And you accused him of being a baby for not wanting to start a physical fight with you. To which Amber replied, I accused him of being a baby for complaining about me hitting him. He was trying to get through the door and I was trying to barricade. Sheesh. She walked right into that one. She finally admitted to it and showed a very key piece of evidence. If you were being hurt by this man, would you be calling him a baby for you just hitting him? And also, would he even be complaining about you hitting him so passively, if I may add, if he is the aggressor that you portray him as? This moment revealed a lot about both of their characters. In our number nine spot, we have Tazia Van Rie. There was a final moment when Johnny's lawyers question Amber about her previous relationship with Tazia Van Rie. They reveal an article that states that Amber Heard allegedly struck her ex-girlfriend, Tazia Van Rie, at the airport in 2009. There were witnesses at the airport, including the cops, that allegedly saw it, which led to the alleged arrest. Johnny's lawyer asked one final question of, Mr. Depp is not the only domestic partner that you have hurt, have you, Miss Heard? Of course, Amber replied, Applied to never hurting any of her partners ever. But sadly, she once again lied to the court as there is evidence on the tape of her admitting to hitting Johnny. That was the last question Johnny's lawyer asked before finishing the cross examination. Damn, just damn. <laughs> I hope someone patted Camille on the back for that finale because that was arguably one of the best endings I've seen in a while. In our number eight spot today, we have Tell the World, Johnny. In day one of the cross examination, the very infamous tape where Amber says to Johnny, See what the jury and judge think. Tell the world, Johnny. Tell them Johnny Depp. I, Johnny Depp, man, I am a victim too of DV. To which Johnny replied, yes. And then Amber went on to saying, you know, it's a fair fight. See how many people believe you or side with you. Johnny Depp's lawyer then commenced to reiterate what was just said by Amber, with Amber confirming that it was indeed her voice. But Camille's slow but subtle emphasis on the power of the words and what was just said, ah, uh, it was the perfect delivery to drive home the point. You can please tell people that it was a fair fight and you can see what the jury and judge think. Tell the world, Johnny. Tell them Johnny Depp. I, Johnny Depp. A man, a victim too of DV. That's what you said, right? To which Amber replied, I am saying it to the man who beat me up. Yes, I thought it was preposterous. To which Johnny Depp's lawyer replied, and the man you beat up. Numerous times, right Mrs. Heard? Amber replied, I could never hurt Johnny. The last comment totally discredited her because the jury has already heard her on numerous occasions on tapes apologize to Johnny and admit to hurting him. Coming up in our number seven spot, we have Fix it. At one point in the cross examination, Johnny's lawyer is reading a few pages out of a journal of what Amber calls their love journal. Camille Vasquez, Johnny Depp's lawyer, reads quite a few entries where Amber is apologizing to Johnny. Amber insists that there's more love entries than apology notes. Camille proceeds to read another apology that shows that Amber is very remorseful over her behavior. Amber proceeds to tell the court and jury that she was always trying to fix it, referring to her always trying to fix the problems they had. To which Johnny Depp's lawyer replies, fix it by apologizing for your bad behavior. <laughs> Yikes, savagery. Coming up in our number six spot, we have spilled wine. After the court listened to the audio tape of Amber and Johnny talking about Amber screaming at Johnny for spilling wine on her. At the beginning of this point, the court listened to the audio tape of Amber and Johnny talking about Amber screaming at Johnny for spilling wine on her. In this recording, 
Amber is very apologetic. After this recording was played, there was an air of where is Johnny's team going with this? But then we quickly realized that this recording was done a week or two after Amber said that Johnny allegedly hurt her. The scene went as follows. Johnny Depp's lawyer Camille Vasquez says, Mr. Depp says you screamed at him when he accidentally spilled wine on you. To which Amber replied, I realize that's what Johnny said. <laughs> to which Johnny's lawyer replied, and Mr. Depp tells you that this freaked out his son Jack. Then Amber said, Johnny often used other people to back him up in our arguments. To which Johnny's lawyer replied, you don't seem too concerned about that, do you? To which Amber replied, I had a lot of concerns. <laughs> To which Johnny's lawyer replied, You don't mention Mr. Depp's really injuring you in this recording, do you? To which Amber went on to say that that was not the point of that conversation. But whether that was the point of the conversation or not, if you were sexually injured by someone, do you think you might be justified to scream if wine was spilt on you? Do you think you might be a little less apologetic for such a small incident? Would love to know your thoughts in the comment section below. Coming up in our number five spot, we have mirror photos. Throughout the cross examination, we hear quite a lot about a particular incident in Australia in March 2015 when Johnny Depp's finger was severed. From what we can gather about the incident is that Amber and Johnny had a big fight which then led Amber to allegedly throw a bottle at Johnny and sever his finger. This led Johnny to seemingly become hysterical to then dip his finger in paint and start writing on the walls of the place they were staying in as well as the mirrors. According to Amber's testimony, she was also physically hurt by Johnny that night and sexually injured by way of a bottle. As Johnny Depp's lawyers are questioning Amber, they show Amber a picture that she took of the writing on the mirror that night. They then point out the fact that Amber can't be seen in the mirror. Interesting. But then also, why aren't there pictures of her supposed injuries from that night? But there is a picture of writing on the mirror, in which she clearly is standing out of frame. Very sus, Amber. In our number four spot today, we have motion denied. After Johnny had made his case and all of the witnesses he brought had spoken, Amber Heard's team went to argue to strike the whole case and trial based off of lack of substantial evidence. Johnny Depp's lawyers took to the stand to argue that not only does he have substantial evidence, but he also has proven that Miss Heard has injured Johnny. He went on to say that regardless of the creativity used in Miss Heard's Washington op-ed, that everyone in the world knew that it was referring referring to Johnny and it therefore has caused him to experience some defamation. The monologue was completely compelling and clearly showed that there is a case here and so the judge denied the motion to strike the case. In our number three spot we have The Gift. Ooh, this one was such a moment. At this point in the cross examination, you see Camille, Johnny's lawyer, begin to warm up Amber by asking her a series of questions to confirm her claims of being hurt by Johnny. She specifically highlights that these claims took place in 2012 and Miss Hurt agrees. But then she asks Amber about a gift that she gave Johnny in 2012 a knife. It was during these cycles of violence in 2012 that you gave Mr. Depp a knife as a gift? Johnny Depp's lawyers asked. To which Amber tried to play it off as if she couldn't remember when she gave it to him. But it was too late because the point was already driven home. She gave a knife to someone who supposedly hurts her. That doesn't sound right. This is the same knife that you gave to the man who would get drunk and violent with you, right? That's what Camille Vasquez finished on and man, was it good. Coming up in our number two spot we have the pledge. Arguably this moment may tie for first because this one and the first place spot was so hard to choose between. This is the moment when we discovered that in Amber's mind, to pledge to do something means to have already done it. To give you context, Johnny Depp's lawyers were trying to point out that Amber said she was going to give all of her divorce money to charity, but she didn't. Amber says that she pledges to, but then we are shown a clip where Amber is seen saying that she has donated the money. Past tense. Oh lordy, this was a fun moment. Johnny's lawyer said, Sitting here today, you have not donated the $7 million. Donated, not pledged, donated the $7 million divorce settlement to charity. To which Amber replied, I use pledge and donation synonymous with one another. Johnny's lawyers quickly jumped in to say, but I don't. Amber begins to make the case that she will donate it, but she hasn't been able to due to being sued. But then of course, Johnny's lawyer then goes on to point out that she received all of her divorce settlement 13 months prior 
to being sued. Coming up in our number one spot, we have TMZ. In the original deposition done with Amber back in August of 2016, Amber was being questioned by Johnny's lawyers, whom are asking her if she sent a text message to Johnny's head of security, jury judge, saying that she is desperately trying to reach Johnny. When explaining the text message, Amber unfortunately has a bit of a slip up when she says, I remember sending this because I wanted to tell Johnny or have him told by Jerry or someone who knew him or was close to him. Basically, I didn't want him to find out online that I had or was about to file for divorce. I wanted him to know verbally, so I was trying to reach him through a third party to tell him. When I say reach, I'm specifically saying I would like him to know information coming from me or coming from Jerry from me so that he finds out about the divorce filing or my intention to do so from some other source other than TMZ, which was alerted. This clip was played in court only for Johnny's lawyer to say, slipped up there, didn't you, Miss Heard? Drops Mike. In an Number 10, Lawyer Objects to Own Question Easily the most embarrassing moment from one of Heard's lawyers was when he objected to his own question. Attorney Adam Nadelhaft made a huge error while he was asking questions about a fight that left Johnny with a severed finger. While the lawyer was questioning Ben King, Depp's house manager, he asked, quote, You didn't know what could cause damage to Mr. Depp's hand while you were there on March 8th, correct? King answered the question by stating a doctor told him that Depp sustained an injury to one of his fingers. Then in an attempt to stop King from continuing his testimony, the lawyer objected, saying, uh, objection hearsay? For a moment everyone was confused until the judge stated, quote, wait, you asked the question, next question. Awkward. And at number 9, can't do math. One of the funniest moments captured was not actually during the trial, but it was to do with the pre-trial details to be sorted out. The judge was on the stand telling each side how much time they will have in court, stating that once they go over time, she'll have to stop them regardless of the line of questioning. At one point, she breaks down the exact hours and minutes each side still has in court. And for some reason, Amber Heard's lawyers kind of object and make it seem like the math does not add up. The judge that breaks down the math and asks the lawyer if she got a different number. After a very awkward silence, someone comes in and lets the judge know that her math adds up. The caption on the video reads, quote, Judge Penny as card has the patience of an actual saint, Amber Heard legal team failing to do basic math. In a number 8, Milani Cosmetics contradicts Amber's lawyer. During her trial, Amber Heard's lawyer stated that Amber would walk around with makeup constantly in case she ever needed to cover a bruise that Johnny had given her. In court, the lawyer held up Milani Cosmetics all-in-one correcting kit while telling the jury how Heard concealed alleged bruises on her face, although it's important the lawyer never claimed that Heard uses that specific product. During the trial, her lawyer held up the makeup and said, quote, this is what Amber carried in her purse for the entire relationship with Johnny Depp. She's an actor. Do you honestly think she would have left her apartment ever without makeup? Do you think she would ever have wanted other people to see her bruises and cuts? This is what she used. She became very adept to it. Lonnie clapped back in a TikTok video showing that the product held up in court was not released until 2017, one year after Heard filed for divorce. So there's no way that Heard could have been covering up her bruises with that makeup. A source close to Heard told People, quote, Heard's lawyer was using an example of the kind of makeup that she used. And at number seven, muffin questioning. During the trial, one of Johnny Depp's witnesses was a psychologist named Dr. Shannon Curry. Dr. Curry's job was to come and testify about the mental state of both of the parties and to determine any psychological issues either party possessed. During her testimony, she stated that Amber had multiple psychological issues and made Amber seem like the abusive party. So to get back at the doctor, Heard's lawyers tried to discredit her. At one point, the lawyers kept asking about was some muffins that Dr. Curry brought to the meeting with Amber. Since Dr. Curry's husband got these muffins, Heard's lawyers wanted to see if Dr. Curry told her husband that a confidential celebrity client, aka Amber, was coming to see her that day. After a long line of useless questioning, Dr. Curry cleared everything up, saying that her husband bought the muffins, but he did not know who they were for. The lawyer was stunned and had to take a few moments to come up with a new question. In at number six, Kate Moss questioning. Last week while Heard was testifying, she was recalling an incident where Johnny allegedly got physical with her sister, Whitney. And during the testimony, she brought up model Kate Moss, to which Depp's team celebrated. Kate Moss and Depp used to date decades ago when they were both very young, and Heard alleged that Johnny also got physical with Moss while they were together. Together, specifically claimed that he pushed Moss down a flight of stairs. In court, Heard said about her sister's altercation with Johnny in 2015, quote, she threw herself in the line of fire. She was trying to get Johnny to stop. Her back was to the staircase and Johnny swings at her. I don't hesitate and wait. I instantly think of Kate Moss and stairs. Court footage then showed Depp's lawyers quietly celebrating after Heard mentions Kate Moss. We can assume that the court did not allow evidence or testimony from Moss to be allowed, but now that Heard has opened the door to the altercation, Moss might be asked to testify. 
Since Johnny clearly does not agree this altercation with Moss happened, Depp's team believes it will once again prove Amber's lies. Halfway number 5, Heard Copying Depp's Outfits One strange thing that has been noticed during the trial is that Amber seems to copy Johnny's outfits in court. Dr. Shannon Curry took the witness stand and testified that she diagnosed Amber Heard with two personality disorders, one that could cause her to mimic her ex-husband Johnny Depp's wardrobe choices. Dr. Curry claimed that Amber's disorder may cause her to quote, take on the identity of the people they are spending time with because it's comforting. This testimony came at an interesting time because fans have been pointing out that Heard seems to copy whatever Depp wears in court. One fan on Twitter wrote, quote, One Johnny wore a grey suit, the next day she wore the same thing. Then he wore a Gucci ensemble, and then she wore it the next day. If the public noticed this was a pattern, Heard's lawyers should have immediately stepped in and told her to stop wearing them. In a number 4, pathetic attempt to discredit Johnny. During one portion of the trial, Johnny Depp was on the stand and Amber Heard's lawyers could ask him whatever they wanted. At one point, the lawyer tried to make a point about Depp's damaged reputation, giving Depp a number of headlines to read, with them all painting a picture of Depp as out of control. The articles called him in crisis, claimed he was losing money, and also claimed his addiction to drinking was ruining his life. The lawyer read a number of these headlines until Depp himself pointed out that all of these sites are trashy gossip sites and they do not print the truth. Depp even called his line of questioning a quote, pathetic attempt. Near the end of the clip, we see Depp start to make fun of these articles and the lawyers were trying to paint them as real evidence. In a number 3, Depp calls out lawyers for hearsay comments. If you've watched even a little bit of this trial, you know that Amber Heard's lawyers love objecting on the grounds of hearsay. According to Cornell Law School, hearsay is an out-of-court statement offered to prove the truth of whatever it asserts. These statements are inadmissible as trial evidence because there's no actual proof to back them up. Basically, during the entire trial, anything that a person did not say or hear directly is objected to and it gets a bit annoying after a while. And social media has been mocking her lawyers for the constant objections. When one of her lawyers were telling Depp to read off articles, the lawyer read one title saying, quote, A year and a month before Amber published the op-ed, headline, Johnny Depp allegedly showed up drunk to movie premiere, reports say. Depp then quickly responded, quote, Reports say, this is hearsay, is it not? Your favorite word. In a number two, asked inappropriate questions. Of course it's a lawyer's job to get down to the truth, so it's not out of the question to assume some uncomfortable questions are asked. At one point, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard were living in Australia while Depp was filming a Pirates of the Caribbean movie. And Amber alleged that Depp tried to urinate in the foyer of her house. Depp's bodyguard Malcolm Connolly was on the stand, and during cross-examination, Heard's team asked him if he witnessed Depp urinating in the foyer of their residence at the time. Connolly confirmed he heard noises inside the home, and that when he entered, he saw Depp in the foyer. When pushed again to answer, the bodyguard said no, he did not see him try to urinate, prompting those in the courtroom to laugh, including Depp. The lawyer then continued, quote, Mr. Depp had his pee out, didn't he? Before being interrupted by an objection. The bodyguard denied it and claimed he would have remembered if he saw it. Depp then tried to contain his laughter. And finally, number one, stupid objections. I talked before about how Heard's lawyers object to ridiculous things, but this is probably the most insane. So I assume that everyone knows that Johnny Depp's most well-known role is playing Captain Jack Sparrow in Pirates of the Caribbean, but maybe Amber Heard's lawyers did not know that. During a line of questioning, Heard's lawyers were speaking to some sort of studio executive or talent manager, and they were speaking of the sixth movie in the franchise. Depp was set to play the lead role in that movie like he had for the five before it. But he was cut from the movie in the midst of the Amber Heard drama. When Depp's lawyers asked the witness what role Depp would play in the sixth movie, Heard's lawyers objected, citing hearsay. Are we surprised? The judge allowed the question, and the answer was none other than Captain Jack Sparrow. Again, are we surprised? Like, we know that's who he plays. Number 10, questionable statements. While addressing the jurors, the actress's attorney, Benjamin Ruttenborn, explained how Heard's involvement in allegedly Depp should not matter in the jury's verdict. Ruttenborn said, quote, There's been testimony about what happened to cut the finger off, but frankly, it's irrelevant to your deliberations here. Amber could have chopped it off with an axe, and it has nothing to do with whether or not Mr. Depp assaulted her. She didn't, but it doesn't matter. Ruttenborn insinuated that the jury's verdict should favor her, even if the actress cut off Depp's finger in the controversial 2015 incident in Australia. The attorney suggested that it did not matter whose side of the claims were true regarding Depp's severed fingertip. Not only that, but Ruttenborn proceeded to accuse that most of the witnesses produced by Depp's legal team were under the actor's payroll. While many found the statement to be uncanny as per the lawsuit, the main deciding factor is 
is whether either party is guilty of defamation of the other. The whole thing was an attempt at a really strange hypothetical argument. Number 9. Ice Cream Photo Herd's legal team produced a photo of Depp asleep on the couch with ice cream spilt across his lap. Explaining the photo, Depp said that he had worked a 17 hour day and taken certain substances where Herd gave him the ice cream because she knew what was going to happen. He said the photo had been taken in Boston and that Herd asked him to hold the ice cream as she noticed that he was falling asleep from the 17 hour day that he worked and also the substances that he had ingested. He also added that if you'll notice, his right hand is in his pocket, so he wasn't participating in the festival of ice cream. Deb said that he was holding her ice cream because she knew what was going to happen, that he would fall asleep and it would drop and that a wonderful picture would be taken for her. Mr. Rottenborn asked Deb if it was her fault that the photo had been taken and Deb said that she snapped it. Showing this photo to the jury made it very obvious that Herd's legal team was trying to paint Depp as an addict, but it really backfired on them when he explained to the jury exactly how the photo was staged by Herd. Number 8. The Mega Pint In the video taken by Herd, which was first published online in 2016 by TMZ, Depp is seen kicking cabinets and cursing in the kitchen of his West Hollywood home. Herd can be heard asking, quote, what happened in the video as Depp grabbed a glass out of the cabinet and smashed it closed, appearing to break a part of the door. Depp is seen pouring himself wine into the glass and telling her, you want to see crazy, I'll give you crazy, before he sees the camera and grabs it. After showing the video, Herd's lawyer, Ben Ruttenborn, asked Depp whether he poured himself, quote, a mega pint of wine. Depp repeated the question in a tone of disbelief to laughter in the courtroom. He then clarified that he did in fact pour himself a large glass of wine because he felt that it was necessary. This was just another ridiculous moment from Depp's cross-examination. Number 7. Forgot her client's name. Elaine Bredhoft is at it again. From the start of the trial, it was evident that she was in over her head. Heard seemed like a challenging client with some brutal things to defend, but Bredhoff seemed to drop the ball every time it was passed to her. When it finally came time for Bredhoff to call Heard to the stand, she called her by her middle name first. She completely messed up the name of her client. Not a good way to take the stand. This slip up, however small, really cemented the public's opinion of Heard's defense team, and it clearly embarrassed her. It also made Bredhoff just seem frazzled and all over the place. Number 6. Imitating Depp The intensity of the defamation trial lessened for a moment when the actress's attorney briefly imitated the Pirates of the Caribbean star while questioning her client on the stand, saying, quote, I'm going to start at the very beginning here. You were asked by Ms. Vasquez about why Mr. Depp won't or can't look you in the eye. She proceeded to play a tape in which Mr. Depp said, you will not see my eyes again. When recalling the actor's comment, Bredhoff lowered her voice to a deeper register, which elicited a laugh from even Depp himself. Depp kept his head down throughout his ex-wife's time on the stand, writing notes with a serious look on his face. When Heard's attorney deepened her voice to mimic his, however, Depp cracked a smile and laughed. This moment made it sound like Bredhoff was poking fun at the actor by mimicking him. Something that Depp's defense team would never be able to get away with if it was done to Heard. Number 5. I'm trying. Lawyers need to have good poker faces. It's a huge aspect of what they do. So for Bredhoff to essentially sigh out loud and mumble that she is trying to a courtroom of people was by definition one of the most bizarre moments of all. Never wear your defeat on your sleeve. This happened because of the frustration she felt as Vasquez constantly objected to questions Bredhoff asked. And the judge sustained a fair amount of them, almost to the point that she could barely get a word out. She literally said, quote, I'm trying, I'm trying, throughout this whole trial. It just seemed like every shot she took was a miss. And when most lawyers go through that, they try to use an incentive to perform better. What professional lawyers don't ever do is express their exhaustion out loud. It's wickedly unprofessional and also shows you know you are losing. Number 4. Her Today Show Appearance People online are criticizing Bredhoft after she blamed social media for the outcome of the Her Depp trial. Following the trial outcome, Bredhoft appeared on the Today Show to discuss the trial's outcome with host Savannah Guthrie. During the interview, Bredhoff said that Depp's team was focused on 
quote, demonizing Heard and suppressing her legal team's evidence, saying that one of the ways Heard was effectively demonized was through social media. Throughout the trial, Heard faced severe backlash online from Depp's fans. Jurors were not supposed to check social media during the trial, but Bredhoft argued that they went home with their families every day where it must have been hard not to hear about the latest online arguments. Her interview would have really embarrassed Heard because it got torn to pieces online. Bredhoft made it seem like her defense team was pointing fingers at everyone else besides themselves when it comes to the blame. Number three, turn on the microphone. Bredhoft also seemed to have a lot of trouble when it came to turning on the microphone. In fact, when addressing the court, she spoke many times and had to be reminded to turn it on. Well, how many times exactly? People paying attention to the entire live stream noticed that Bredhoft had to be told eight times to turn on her microphone when speaking. In fact, even her and herself could be seen reaching over in frustration, turning on Bredhoft's microphone for her. It made Heard's defense team appear really incompetent, even with the smallest of things. Number two, Kate Moss. One of the craziest moments of the trial was the unexpected mention of Kate Moss during Heard's testimony. She made reference to an allegation that Depp had pushed the British model down a flight of stairs during their romance in the 90s. This mention allowed Depp's team to call on Moss to refute the claim, and so Depp's defense team did a fist bump in the courtroom. Depp's team were clearly very happy with this because they knew how Moss would go on to defend Depp and refute Heard's previous claims that he pushed her down the stairs. This moment was a huge win for their team overall, and it just goes to show you how badly Heard's lawyers slipped up here. Number one, the TMZ guy. During a testimony from Morgan Tremaine, former TMZ journalist, which established that the celebrity news publication had been able to publish exclusive photos and videos of Heard during the early stages of her contentious divorce from Depp, based on tips it received about her whereabouts. This contradicted the recorded testimony from Heard, saying that she was caught off guard by the presence of the photographers, and that she has no idea how TMZ got a hold of the story. Jermaine testified that he dispatched paparazzi to stay outside the Los Angeles courthouse, based on an anonymous tip to capture photos of her in 2016, when she filed for a temporary restraining order against Depp. During the cross-examination, Bredhoff said to Tremaine, quote, this gets you your 15 minutes of fame, doesn't it? He responded with, quote, I could say the same thing about you taking Amber Heard as a client. It wasn't just a sick burn. The way he clapped back at Bret Hoft was truly an amazing courtroom moment. <laughs>